welcome, welcome humans and gentle humans to San Francisco's third ever culinary salon! It says pause for wild applause on my uh, script. Does that feel wild? Can we make a wild Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to introduce our next reader, uh, Meg Ellison. Yes. But there will be further opportunities to make noise for Meg, don't worry. <laughs> Meg Ellison is older than Sin, and her heart can grow no darker. She wants to basically do it with the abyss. Every midwinter, an ancient evil with flesh of oak and eyes of undead suns pleads with her to bestride the world like a colossus, meeting out pleasure and pain in defiance of desert as a fundamental refutation of God. Each year, she's like, um, pass. <laughs> and yet, the day of her acceptance draws near, and there will be a wailing and a gnashing of teeth, like the opening bars of a really serious death metal track. And humans, and gentle humans, yesterday was her birthday! <laughs> so, tremble in fear as you pay your loudest homage to your dark birthday queen, Elison the Great and Terrible. Without any further ado, I give you Meg! Fear not, gentle humans. This looks like a fucking novel, but I swear to God, it's just printed in gigantic font so that I can read it. <laughs> this story was published in Fantasy and Science Fiction Magazine last year, uh, the November-December issue, with the last story from the late, great Kate Wilhelm. I feel very pleased about these to have been able to share a TOC with her. And it's called Big Girl. You ready? <laughs> Alright. The girl woke up with a sore neck and three seagulls perched on her eyelashes. As her eyes fluttered open, the startled gulls flapped away. They squawked in alarm, but continued to their way in the gray pre-dawn light. She shook her head a little, still not fully awake. She blinked a few times. The men on a fishing boat saw a chunk of yellow sleep crust fall from her eye and splashed into the water beside them, the size of a bike tire. As she stepped into the water, the boat rocked as if it were passing in the wake of a much larger ship. She blundered forward, skipping and falling to her knees. The impact registered as a 3.1 on a nearby seismograph, and the wave pushed the boat out to the end of its anchor chain. Her dark hair hung over her face, but when she began to wail her disorientation, it blew out in front of her mouth, like black banners caught in the wind. The fishermen pulled up their anchor in a panic. The girl stood up to her full height, towering over the Richmond Bridge. She seemed to realize that she had nothing on, and covered herself with her arms. She was still standing there with her arms crossed tight over her breasts, when the first helicopters arrived. <coughs> SFGate.com. <laughs> Reports are coming in that a huge inflatable sex doll has been spotted floating near the human bridge. <laughs> Please tweet sightings or pics to at SFGate. <laughs> San Francisco Chronicle. Early reports of an inflatable woman or large art installation near the Richmond Bridge this morning have been confirmed by independent footage acquired by the Chronicle today. The drone video shows that the object is animated, some speculate, by radio control. The object looks like a human female and is approximately 320 feet tall. The figure is nude and has no obvious branding or other marks to identify it. <laughs> video and still photos indicate that the object is anchored or perhaps limited to the area immediately surrounding Red Rock Island. There are reports from boats in the area that the figure is broadcasting sound, though it is unknown whether it is issuing music or recorded statements. <laughs> so far, no artist or corporation has claimed ownership or responsibility for the appearance of the ambiguous symbol. This may be due to the controversial nudity of the subject, which appears very lifelike and is fully anatomically correct. <laughs> More on this story as it develops. <clears throat> At kindness kills with a Z. I saw the hashtag babe this morning. There's no way it's inflatable. It's too lifelike. At three libra salad. Hey, at USCG is pulling up to the babe right now. Image. A US Coast Guard vessel pulls in front of a light brown calf. Kneecap visible above the ship's head. At USCG. All vessels and individuals steer clear of the hashtag babe phenomenon until <laughs> further notice. We are assessing the safety of the situation. At SF Examiner. The hashtag babe is a real girl. Sources have identified Bianca Martinez of East Oakland, age 16, in a lake. It took a couple of hours to corroborate the examiner's scoop. No one believed that the girl was human, so they assumed the headline was a hoax or a hack. By the time the truth hit the news, thousands of pictures had been taken of the girl huddled beside a Coast Guard boat, goosebumps all over her blue-brown skin as large as Canada geese. East Bay Express, title, A Giant Among Men. 
In the first few days after the babe, Bianca Martinez, a 15-year-old Oakland girl, appeared in the water, misinformation ruled. Between reports that she was an inflatable art project, a publicity stunt, a pre-Burning Man exhibition of an animatronic sculpture, <laughs> the truth seemed elusive. Yet as Joel Rabinowitz of the Essex Examiner first reported, and the Coast Guard later confirmed, Ms. Martinez is a human female. More than that, she's a minor. Once positive, positive identification was made, and her DNA was matched with that of her parents, publishing or selling photos of the new Colossus became illegal. Photos have been surrendered to and seized by local police and the FBI, but the internet is keeping images alive in the echo of the theftening back in 2014. <laughs> Far from being leaked or hacked, most of these photos were taken by legitimate journalists and printed in nationally circulated newspapers, on TV, and on Twitter. Getting this unexpected tidal wave with child, child pornography under control is now as difficult as housing or feeding the babe herself. Alameda County Child Welfare has stepped in, attempting to help Martinez's parents provide for their child's gigantic needs. <laughs> the struggle to clothe her has attracted donations of sailcloth and large nautical tarps. <laughs> but the girls still seem half closed and constantly shivering. Food banks claimed record donations as people banded together to feed Martinez, but county officials struggled to find her somewhere to eat where people cannot crowd around to watch. The solution thus far has involved Martinez wading out into the bay to eat out of her hands in relative privacy. Experts have guessed Martinez's height at somewhere around 350 feet and her weight at almost 100 tons. Her passage across the bay has disrupted ferry and fishing boat traffic and the Coast Guard has issued a ban on all sailboats and small craft for the time being. Martinez was seen two, only two nights ago batting dozens of drones out of the air around her, sweeping them into the sea to avoid their lights and cameras. In the carefully propped po photo that ran above the folds, pixelated starfish dotted her pubic hair like deliberate decoration. <laughs> The East Bay Express attempted to find out where the babe sleeps, but our search came up empty. From BuzzFeed. <laughs> <laughs> Is San Francisco's giant mystery girl human? Human rights organizations around the world are struggling with this question now as government officials on all sides hesitate to offer the girl, Bianca Martinez, any kind of aid. She's just so damn big, Oakland Mayor Laney Schiff remarked. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult to think of her as a citizen of Oakland when Oakland can't begin to meet her needs. And as she's taken up temporary indigent, indigent residence on various beaches and islands, I'm not sure it's strictly Oakland's issue. A representative from the Department of Human Services said the organization was unclear on their responsibilities in this case. She is 15, and if she was a completely normal-sized girl a week ago, but tomorrow, who knows? We're waiting on a decision to find out how we should deal with this. Samuel Sporo, one of Martinez's former teachers at Oakland High, offered up a kind of another point of view, saying, imagine this was your kid. She's terrified and exposed, and there's nowhere safe for her to go. She's homeless and naked and practically starving, and we're going to argue whether she's a person anymore? Oakland police are concerned about Martinez's superhuman strength and ability. One officer, who asked not to be named, asked, what if she decides to walk home one day? She could flatten Chinatown, maybe take out the MacArthur Mingus while she's at it. She could destroy bark tracks, and we couldn't do anything to stop her. That's not a person. That's a threat. <coughs> Martinez's parents are reported to have in limited English proficiency and have thus far refused to speak with the press. The Coast Guard arranged for them to visit their daughter on a boat last Monday, but the boat reportedly never left the dock. Martinez's father is a plumber and her mother is a homemaker. The family belongs to Our Lady of Lourdes Catholic Church, and they have not been spotted there in recent weeks. Representatives of the Oakland Diocese declined to comment on Bianca Martinez's humanity. Redacted.net excerpt. Jiggly Teen Giant. Why am I being harassed by the FBI and other law enforcement for posting pictures of this hot ass teen giant? <laughs> She's a big girl. She looks grown up to me. For fuck's sake, she could crush my skull with her thumb. Can she really be a victim? Talk about unrapeable. She could flick me to Oregon if I climb that mountain of round ass. Redacted.com excerpt. Nobody inched along the giant's neck, taking even little steps. Her breathing was like a hot wind that caressed him all over, whistling around his erection like a wind through the trees. There, she rumbled in her huge, deep voice. Nobody, said nobody, trembling. Oh, I don't think so. You can't fool mommy like that. The giant pinched nobody around the thigh and lifted him high into the air. He screamed in ecstasy and terror. She dropped him into her massive maw and swallowed him whole. <laughs> he was engulfed in the warm, wet folds of her enormous throat. Muscles worked all around him, forcing him downward, squeezing him tight. He slipped into the total darkness of the giant's stomach, the acidic heat suffusing him with deadly desire. 
Nobody felt along the stomach lining until he found a comfortable, groovy place to grind his aching member against her pulsing insides. <laughs> the giant gurgled happily in her sleep. <clears throat> At WTF Facts. <laughs> Bianca Martinez, the giantess of the SF Bay, has a heart as big and as heavy as a Volkswagen Beetle. <laughs> At Barely Legal 199, count down to Bianca Martinez's 18th birthday. And a link. New York Times. The girl who was Rendell. <laughs> I first met Bianca Martinez sitting at the beach. <laughs> she had been shot several times by park rangers after an altercation involving the now deceased photographer Mark Honhofer. Ms. Martinez, in her attempt to stop him from photographing her genitals close up as she slept, pulled Honhofer's left arm off his body. <laughs> he died immediately from the loss of blood. Bianca sat cross-legged on the pebbles of the beach, squeezing bullets out of her skin and her forearm like a patch of blackheads. She had to whisper to me anything else was overwhelming. There was no hope of privacy. I asked her if she was under arrest. She shrugged her massive shoulders, a hypnotic, rippling, rising and falling wall of flesh. They say I am, but they can't cuff me or put me in jail, so I guess I'm in trouble. <laughs> At this, she made air quotes with two fingers on each hand, each the size of a full-grown dolphin. <laughs> she glanced over at the park ranger's truck, each of her brown eyes as big as a driver's side window. I guess they could chain me to something. Maybe. In the days that followed, she was approached by several different branches of law enforcement, as well as DHS. The helplessness they shared was palpable as they failed to come to a decision on how to govern the giant girl's behavior. In the end, they decided that she had killed the photographer in self-defense and gave up, driving their squad cars and sports utility vehicles off the beach. The two of us were left with the gulls and the constant sound of drones coming near enough to film her, but trying to stay out of reach. I asked her what she missed. With her massive face laid on the warm rocks beside me, she whispered things that any teenage girl might name. My friends, she said, as an elephantine tear slid down her face to cool on the rocks. My school my clothes. I miss wearing clothes so much, I'm cold all the time. Nobody's offered me anything that's even close to big enough, I just hold it against me. I dream all the time that I'm back in my bed, but then I wake up and it's raining. Yesterday, Carl the Fog, the popular personification of the ever-present San Francisco Fog, tweeted at Bianca that he would like to marry her. <laughs> the last time I saw her, she stood up on that beach made from the Marin Headlands a wooded area that's sparsely populated by some of the richest people in the state. Local papers report that homeowners there fear her presence and the possible damage she might do to their property. As she reared up to her full, terrible height, the fog wrapped itself around her like the soft gray fur of an arctic fox. Carl might be the only match for this monster of a girl. At Butt Stuffed Pizza. <laughs> I went to school with Bianca since we were eight. I feel so bad for her. At Candle in the Wind, this has gone on long enough. Someone needs to help her, hashtag babe. At Giants Fan 87, we finally have a real SF giant. Too bad she's got cramps and she can't play. At BBC <laughs> Bianca Martinez, the giant of San Francisco Bay, found unresponsive on the beach, link. At Oaktown Rats, beached whale, pick redacted. San Francisco Chronicle. Bianca Martinez, the Bay Area's mysterious giant girl, was found unresponsive, lying on the beach near Point Richmond yesterday evening. Footage from the KROZ news copter showed that her abdomen is slightly distended and she is bleeding from her vaginal area. Attempted, attempts to rouse her by sound or pressure have failed. Her parents were on the scene with their priest who supportedly gave the girl the last rite sometime after sundown. EMTs on the scene could discern Martinez's pulse and confirm that she was still alive, but could not determine the cause of her unconsciousness. Attempts to cover Martinez's body or move it back from the encroaching surf have failed. Snapchat story. She's so heavy. SF. An EMT in whites takes Martinez's pulse by leaning against her neck, forearms pressed to the skin, head turned away from the massive body as he tries to count. The vibrations of her pulse bob his head, slowly, slightly. A crowd of girls in UC Berkeley gear pose a few feet from the body, smiling until one of them realizes her shoe is sinking in the bloody sand. Martinez slowly lifts one hand, its shadow passing over the morning beach walkers and their dogs. All heads turn. A woman screams and her small dog barks importantly, punctuating the sound. 
Martinez's hand drops into the surf and the giant gets up. She drags her knees through the wet sand, leaving impressions large enough to drive a jeep into. Her right hand leaves a perfect print as she pushes up off the beach. Cake sand falls from her breasts and belly as she stands to her full height. Chunks come raining down, smashing apart on the ground when they hit. Cameras trained on her face pick up only a black shape against the morning light. The giant walks into the sea, washing away blood and sand, saying nothing. SFGiantWatch.com It's been 413 days since we had a sighting of Bianca the Giant. Rumors that she's fled to a Farallon Island remain unsubstantiated. The islands are out of drone range and no ship has sighted her or brought back pictures. Aircraft have not been able to find her. Is it possible that she's dead? Did she just walk into the sea? We need answers. That giant belongs to all of us. She's a symbol of the fantastic, the awesome, the unknowable reach of human potential. Every time a lighthouse on the bay makes its circle, I hope she knows it's searching for her. California State Department of Justice featured missing children. Bianca Rosalba Martinez. Report type, runaway juvenile. Sex, female. Race, Hispanic. Hair brown, eyes brown. Height, 370 feet. <laughs> Weight, 200,000 pounds. Date of birth, 8-16-2001. Clothing, none. Last seen, April 28, 2015. Dental x-rays available, no. Bianca Martinez was last seen on the beach near the Sutro Baths. Bianca didn't know the name of the island she was on, she just knew she had it to herself. There were caves and rock formations on one side, and flat beach on the other. She caught dolphins that wriggled helplessly between her fingers and cried when she dashed their heads against the rocks to kill them. She didn't know how to light a fire. In time, she learned to deal with their raw flesh in her mouth. She cracked whole coconuts between her teeth and cherished the warm drips of milk and the sweet flesh. She tried not to eat them all, but could not help herself. She caught tangles of kelp and ate it, too, hoping it was like a vegetable. It was salty, and she hated it. She grew thin. She watched the sun come up alone and go down alone, occasionally, with the company of the moon. She slept during the day, her broad brown back soaking up the sun. She walked the island at night, building sandcastles that were two stories tall. She tried to befriend seabirds, offering them shreds of fish and letting them off on her hands. They shat on her and kept to themselves. <laughs> she thought she would die of loneliness, but every time she lay down, she would wake as soon as she got cold. She jumped at the sound of airplanes. It had been almost two years before she realized something was wrong. The seagulls in her palm were getting larger. The fish were too big to eat. She left the parts strewn in the sand and watched the crabs and flies swarm over them. She tried to measure herself against the rocks, gauging whether she could see over the top from one day to the next. The change in hope had happened overnight the first time. This time, it crept into her body like a thief. She doubted it was real. She had wished for it too many times. But the day came when she was only shorter than the rocks that she had seen over a month before. It took days for her to gather the courage to take to the water again. She had swum out when she was too big for anything to stop her, too huge to care about any obstacle. This time, she knew that there were things in the sea bigger than her. She acclimated herself to daylight and chose a day with a clear sky. It took half the day to swim back. The pull of the tide yanked her farther and farther south. She came ashore in Monterey Bay, exhausted and with seawater in her lungs. Dave is back. <laughs> Santa Cruz police positively identified Bianca Martinez yesterday after her spectacular reemergence from hiding. The girl, formerly known as the Babe, has shrunk considerably, coming in at only 100 feet tall. Local government officials scrambled to help her, noting that she has lost a considerable amount of weight and her massive ribs and hip bones are very prominent in her frame. <laughs> the Walnut Avenue Family and Women's Shelter has offered to assist Ms. Martinez securing transitional housing and food donations for her. At her reduced size, they were also able to offer her something resembling clothing, as she is said to be resting comfortably in a large structure somewhere in Santa Cruz County. Experts are baffled as to why the babe suddenly lost so much of her famous mass. Police reports say that the girl herself could offer no explanation. More on this story as it develops. Hanger inventory. Two pallets dry goods donated by Grocery Outlet, contents unknown. Sixteen king sheet sets salvaged from the Hotel Durant's fire sale. 2,000 gallons water donated by Home Depot. Two pitchforks donated by Home Depot. <laughs> 35 books large print donated by the Santa Cruz Public Library. One case Hershey bars donated by Hershey. <laughs> One iPad donated by Apple. <laughs> Instagram account belonging to at Street Prophetess, 2,875 likes. 
Bianca Martinez kneels between two A-frame ladders, as seen from the back. Two women wielding pitchforks labor at detangling her hair, which hangs to her waist. Caption. Every girl deserves to feel pretty. Hashtag just girly things. Hashtag babe. Hashtag brown eyed girl. KPIX TV News. Footage of Bianca Martinez emerging from her hangar rolls as a reporter speaks. It's coming out day here in San Francisco as Bianca Martinez, the so-called babe, has agreed for the first time to speak on camera. We're all here watching with bated breath as she approaches. As you can see, Martinez is much smaller than she used to be and is now able to wear clothes. It looks as though she's approaching the microphones now. Let's see what she has to say. <laughs> the reporter turns her back as the camera switches to a view of Bianca, microphones tiny in front of her chin. She opens her mouth, but no sound is heard. A few moments of this, her face grows confused. The reporter faces the camera again. It looks like we've had a slight technical difficulty here. Let's take a moment to review the history of the babe phenomenon while the crew works it out. Footage rolls from Bianca's debut, blurs and black bars obscuring her nudity. The prepared clips end, but the audio has not improved. Bianca turns her back and crouches to re-enter the hangar. No further word is issued. At Dev4, Dev4. Man, now hashtag babe wears clothes. Who authorized this? <coughs> At Very Slimitude. Did anyone else notice that Bianca isn't as hot as she used to be? At Three Lizards. I wonder if the hashtag babe is going to be normal sized again. Can she just go back home? Is that allowed? Bianca noticed her sheets were bigger and bigger on her every day. She woke up disoriented, unable to balance. Her hair was far too long, tickling the backs of her thighs. When she was only 20 feet tall, she walked home. Cameras and drones followed, but not as many as before. She hardly noticed. SF Examiner. Babe has babe. Bianca Martinez, the girl formerly known as the babe, gave birth to her first and only child today at Kaiser Medical Center in Oakland. At 15 feet 3 inches, Martinez is the tallest woman ever to have given birth. Her daughter, Inez, was born weighing 8 pounds exactly and is only 18 inches long. The child's father, Ricky Arden, the 32-year-old man from Oakland, laughed and joked with reporters this morning when asked about the birth. She just slid out, Arden exclaimed, offering a gesture to illustrate. She was so little and Bianca so big. Must be the easiest baby ever born. Ms. Martinez was unavailable for comment. However, a source from the hospital informed us that Martinez left the hospital two full feet shorter than she was at intake. When Ricky left, Bianca was just over six and a half feet tall. Inez was four years old, perfectly normal and well-adjusted in every way. She had not known her father well and did not miss him for long. It was Inez who pointed out to Bianca how short she was getting. Bianca's parents never liked to remark on her size. They had accepted her in the day she was able to fit into their house again, but they never talked about the intervening years. There was no denying when Bianca's 10-year-old daughter was taller than she was. The mark on the wall said 411, but Bianca disliked numbers. The college fund had come through anonymous donors years before, intended for Bianca herself. She'd never gotten around to using it, but the people at the bank said yes, she could use it for her daughter, too. They had to put a box of computer paper on the floor to help her climb up to the upholstered chair to sign her name. The counselor at CSU Hayward was very sensitive to people with disabilities and went out of her way to make Ms. Martinez feel welcome. She had never registered a student whose parent was a little person, and the double minority status made her giddy as she entered Inez's information into the computer. When Bianca got back to her, chair, her car after dropping Inez off in her first dorm room, she found that the pedal extender was too short to reach the gas. She had to pull it and adjust the length to drive herself home, sitting up in her booster seat and peering over the dash. Inez was the last person to see her mother. She came home with a bursting laundry bag and found Bianca, pacing back and forth across the wide pages of her scrapbook. It lay open to the images she had printed off the internet, her own towering silhouette beside the Bay Bridge. Her feet made no impression as she walked across the heavy paper, no taller than a dragonfly. Inez reached out her hand, unsure if she could touch her mother without hurting her. I'm in here somewhere, Bianca said. The next day, Try as she might, Inez could not find her mother at all. Thank you.